Welcome back to State of Decay 2 Heartland. Uh, folks in the chat are telling me in the aftermath of the previous episode that I might have just missed my opportunity to recruit well. Diana. That Diana fired off a mission right here and uh, that I passed it on my way home uh, from, you know, from uh, grabbing Isaac. That apparently it expired and I missed my chance and I never even noticed it was there. Which is making me feel guilty because I set up that mission and I don't remember setting it up to have this stringent of a time limit. Like, I don't remember setting it up to have a time limit at all. And so my, my guess is I might have, like, there might basically have been some boilerplate in the, in, in, in the missions where it's like basically a mission by default might come with a time limit. And unless I change the time limit, oh wait, I was gonna fuel up this car. Unless I change the time limit, it, it, it's just always really short. Or something for like, you know, especially for missions where it's like a random survivor on the side of the road. Those would normally have time limits and go away because you don't want to just permanently clutter up people's mission lists. So I'm going to go to the location where Diana's supposed to be. And if, yeah, if Diana is there and like has her mission, that's great. If she's there and she's like dead and the mission is gone, I think I'm going to feel like I didn't do a good job of that. I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear a feral. Um, I think because... We did not, like, I think that mission did fire off while I was doing the last episode, but I was doing something else. And I spent a reasonable amount of time doing other things. Like, I wasn't screwing around. I was just completing another mission I was in the middle of. I didn't, I don't think I did anything careless or just bum around and ignore Diana. And so if, if that was enough to lose the Diana mission forever, that's, yeah, that's uh, on me. I, I, I missed something. Because it, it, I don't think it should be that way. Part of me wants to just blame someone else. <laughs> and say, oh, somebody else made me do it or whatever. But I, I genuinely don't remember well enough to be sure. So I'm assuming this is my fault. Okay, so I definitely did not spawn a mission here. Presuming I've got the right place, and people are telling me I've got the right place. Zed's nearby. Folks are suggesting I might find Diana's dead body here. I'm not seeing it yet, if it's here. Oh, La Coalition, no, I have not tried to do... I don't remember the move you sent me to try on uh, on, on Ferals, the powerhouse move. Do you, is that just sort of the... Uh, Can't do it. I forgot what the special powerhouse move was. But no, no, I don't remember that, so no, I haven't tried it. Okay, so Colas has suggested it might actually be more of a range limit. That basically, you get close to Diana, well, and if you help her when you get close to her, then the mission works out. But if you if you miss the opportunity and you leave, then she gets in trouble. That's The problem is, like, I was sitting here talking to you all. I was not paying attention to new missions cropping up. And there is, you know, it is difficult to notice when new missions crop up in this game, because there's just always so much going on. Yeah, it pops up on the screen, but it's just like, it's really easy not to see it. So depending on the idea that the player will notice a mission popping up the very first time it pops up and immediately react to it like it's an emergency. The other thing is most, most of our missions in this game are not emergencies. Um, you don't actually have to do them at all if you don't want to. And so the fact that, you know, you can get, if you miss a mission in Heartland, that mission might never show up. There's a part of my base I can never expand because I didn't get that character. That's that's a big cost for the pay player to pay for simple inattention to the UI. Okay, yeah. So Coalition says the double jump kick basically uh, for the for the powerhouse skill is particularly good against Ferals. If I if I get a character with powerhouse, I'll have to try that out. Yeah, I'm kind of... I'm annoyed at myself for the way that mission works. I kind of actually want to write a bug about it. Hold on. I'm going to write a note to myself. Bug the fragility of the Diana mission. 
Because that's... That's just silliness. I'm glad I'm playing Heartland so I can catch my own mistakes like this. And that's the thing. As the person who was working on a bunch of missions simultaneously, you know, I was not playing them naturally in the game. Like, I wasn't playing through the game naturally and just seeing them in context. I was, you know, force spawning those missions in a cheat menu and playing them to make sure that the mission functioned correctly. And so if I'm doing that, I mean, if I'm testing the Diana mission, I'm going to be testing the Diana mission just, you know, I spawn it and then I go immediately do it. I didn't, I, I'm sure I didn't personally test what ignoring the Diana mission looked like. And so, I didn't catch how punishing that was. Or did I know, that's the thing, my memory is so bad, I could easily have known this could have been intentional and I just didn't realize how obnoxious it was going to be. So again, I don't want to. I don't want to absolve myself because I don't like it now. I don't want to act like, oh yeah, well, if I'd realized, I never would have done it this way. Oh, somebody else needed to tell me about it. No, I mean, I should have. I feel like I should have caught this. So anyway, I just. I don't want to absolve myself of responsibility for this not being fun. Those Wilberson numbnuts borrowed my filling machine. You mind picking it up for me? <laughs> so I've got accept mission eagerly and accept mission cautiously. Uh, and so this was, again, like, sort of me poking fun a little bit at uh, just how these kinds of missions work, where oftentimes in a video game, somebody will ask you to do something sketchy, and your options are like, no, I refuse to help you, or sure, I you seem like a trustworthy mage. And, and you don't get that middle ground of like, eh? Is this actually a good idea? Uh, and so I tried to give that here, where it's like, accept the mission, but you don't think this is necessarily a good idea. These people and they know you. They won't hassle you about this. this smells kind of sketchy to me. All right, so we're gonna head up there and get her filling machine from the old moonshine barn. I kind of forgot how this plays out, so it'll be interesting for me to see. I remember. I think I set it up for Mickey to be there. And for there to be some kind of dialogue about this, but I, I've forgotten what happens. I think Mickey's there, and I think you can either just take it or you can talk to him about it first. And you find out something about these characters and their relationships, but I, I, I don't remember what. David Dell, you know I can't answer those kinds of questions. I'm not answering State of Decay 3 questions. All right, so you've got a perfect place to see the difference between a, a required objective. Don't mind me. I'll stay out of your way. Oh, I thought he was coming after me. He's coming after this zombie. He just suddenly attacks me. I'm like, what's going on, Mickey? All right, so yeah, the difference between a required objective and an optional objective. Hey, what brings you around here? Reba sent us to pick up her filling machine. She says you were giving it back? Damn. That woman's gonna drink herself right into the grave. Nah, sure, take it. As long as she don't get into the moonshine business, I got no problem. But honestly, I wouldn't get too attached to that old broad. She's on thin ice with my cousin. Oh, so he's worried about her because she's an alcoholic? Is that what it was? I forgot about all of this. All right, so, wait, where do I get the filling machine? Where did we stick it? I forgot where we stuck it. It's in here somewhere. I think I even chose the the container. Was it in here? Just what I was looking for. There it is. This load's gonna wear me out. All right, get out without making a fuss. Return the filling machine to Reba. Paroxicus asked, did, uh, is Mickey sick or did somebody whip his ass? Uh, somebody whipped his ass. Um, I'm surprised he hasn't healed by now, but, um, yeah, I decided to fight him when he wanted to, uh, collect from Xander. And so I shot him on the face a couple of times. 
<laughs> and so that's why he's looking a little bit uh, worse for wear. Is because uh, I think in like episode four, I uh, did some serious damage. Let's see here. La Coalition? I, I don't think I fully understand what you were saying about about something making lore sense. I don't think I understand Sounds what you were saying. So I can either go, here you go, and deliver the filling machine, or sure. And hey, Mickey asked after you. Deliver filling machine curiously. And then, or I could just be really judgmental and say, oh, he implied she was an alcoholic, so I'm keeping the filling machine and you can't have it. Mickey's a sweet boy, but he lets his cousin Nat run him around on the end of a stick. Nasty one. Damn, do you say that to her face? I'll say that to anybody in earshot, and I don't care if she knows about it. Don't be a stranger. So, I really like what Andy did with the variant dialogue with these characters. That basically... The fact that I bought Brock on this mission that's all about the Wilkerson's means that Mickey reacted to him with contempt. Um, because, like, oh, what are you doing back here? You know? And then when Reba was talking that way about Nat, Brock is intimidated. He's like, holy crap, you can't talk about Nat that way. His experience is being Nat's lackey, right? And, like, her controlling his life. And so he can't imagine somebody deciding you know to, to sort of start a fight with Nat so but like if you had brought if, if I brought a different character up here we would have got a whole different vibe from this mission so I but so yeah Andy did a great job of sort of like changing the the tone of this like even though you know the way that I set the mission up all I did was say okay um, you know you make this choice and I and I wrote the lines like, I wrote the dialogue that's sort of, like, that's written down in the choice. I wrote that. Um, I think Andy could do a revision on that, but I, I, I put some initial stuff in there just to make it functional, right? And then I said, you know, okay, so Reba says this li says a, a line as you're talking to her. You make this choice, and then the characters talk afterwards. And I said, you know, like, the you know, the Reba says this, player says this, Reba says this. But I didn't say what these this is were. I said, you know... It was like Reba line A, player line B, Reba line C. Was all I said, and you know, we had a design document that sort of like roughly said, you know, this is vaguely what these characters are saying. But then Andy went in, and he decided what those particular lines were going to be for each of those characters. And so, like, you know, we know that Reba has to talk, and then the player has to talk, and then Reba has to talk again. And Reba's lines were going to be the same every time. We can't really differentiate those by who the player is playing. But the player could say whatever. And so, depending on who the player was, Andy wrote different lines for them. Which well, kind of changed the entire tone of the interaction. Okay, so... The Feral is there, hiding in some bushes. Headshot now! Dang it! Oh, stop that! There we go. Okay. All right. So yeah, Coalition. At some point, I'll get a character with Powerhouse. We can try that move on a Feral. <laughs> Randolph Court says it helps if you shoot their head. I was trying. Brock was even telling me to. I was trying. It's hard. So Awesome Twitch Dude asks if the new infestation stuff is going to apply to Heartland 2. I assume not, because Heartland is a different game mode. I think that we would have to... If, if I understand it right, and again, this is not... Shit, I'm getting that fucking zombie crud. Uh, this is not me speaking from knowledge. This is me speaking from assumptions. I'm assuming that Heartland does not automatically get the infestation update. We shouldn't let all that empty space go to waste. And that if we did decide to put the, the new infestation stuff into Heartland, um, I'm betting that... I mean, that would be costly, because there would have to be a lot of testing in Heartland. Uh, and I think that the team would probably avoid 
taking on that sort of added labor uh, for something that, that you know, a lot of players are not going to even try. And also, I mean, because it's so dependent on Plague Hearts, there's very few Plague Hearts in Heartland. Heartland is mostly about Plague Walls and the Gauntlet. There's like a handful of Plague Hearts and like some very mission-driven Plague Hearts. And I think having, you know, infestations come out of those Plague Hearts would be unsatisfying and strange, and it just have we would have weird ramifications. It would take a bunch of extra time and you know, heaven knows the infestation update has taken enough time as it is. So that I, I, I doubt that they're doing that. But again, I don't really know for certain. I'm not because I'm not on that team. Let's see here. Um mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see here. So Ari Twitch said, oh, says, I was saying that uh, changing Diana's setup would invalidate lots of Reddit posts and wikis. Uh, gotcha. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so yeah, and the Coalition says, the Diana mission does make sense because she was in a life or death situation. And if you just ignore her, um, the idea is that she should probably die. I agree with that. I, I, I agree with that. I just think the fact that in this particular case, I was focused on one other mission. I went and I completed that mission, and by the time I looked back at my mission list, Diana was already gone. Like, that that felt like it was a little much. And so that's why I kind of had a problem with it. You're right that it, it, it is legitimate for us to have a character die if they call for help and you decide not to save them. That is completely legitimate. And I, and I, I don't think there's something wrong with us deciding that a character dies if you don't help them. The thing that worried me was the fact that I genuinely did not notice the mission. I behaved normally. And as a result of behaving normally, having not noticed the mission, I, I never even saw it. Like, I literally would have thought, if I was a new player to this, I literally would have not realized that Diana even existed in the first place. Like, it, it, it's like she just was never there at all. And that feels, that feels like we might have been too aggressive with it. Like, we should at least, for instance, if it's a distance thing, we should let the player go back to Jurassic Junction without her dying um, so that they can get there, recenter, look back at their mission list, see her, and then go back to save her. If it's a time thing, I think we might need to give the player more time um, so that they can, again, finish whatever they're in the middle of if they didn't notice the the, the mission going by and then, and then you know, sort of get a chance to... To recenter themselves and react. So that's what I'm saying. Not that it's illegitimate for us to. Oh, stop it! Oh gosh, what? That is not where I was trying to target that. Okay, I got some of the zombies. Not enough of them. Oh, dang it! Almost got it. Great shooting, Jeff. Okay. Okay, so Coalition says that for him, in his mind, the bug is isn't that the isn't that the mission kills Diana. Or that it, you know like this infestation bullshit is now yesterday's news. Or that it has a range you can leave with, that will that will get her killed. It's that it doesn't warn you. It doesn't give you that sort of mission will expire warning. And so I hate that warning. But part of the reason I hate it is because it's broken. Like it does not work the way it's supposed to. You'll notice that if if you drive past both the initial radius and the um, and the final radius, the text deaths. for the two of them overlaps, and it's uh, it's one of the most broken is. pieces of UI in the game. And I bugged it ages ago, but it's just never risen to the priority level where it would get fixed. Um, and so, like, so that that UI just annoys the heck out of me. We should fix it. Um, Gotta be quieter. But it's also like, especially when you get it for a mission you didn't consciously accept, it just feels weird it feels like you're being like told like hey you idiot you know when you don't even know that something was going on so i can see why i probably avoided using it because i just hate it so much um but i mean it's not a good excuse if it's necessary um 
So yeah, that is that is a good poss potential solution, is to keep the radius but put the warning on it. Because if it's the only time we're using that warning in the game, even if it is an obnoxious warning, like, people probably would prefer that to losing access to that character because they just simply didn't notice the mission. So as much as I resisted it when you first set it, that might actually be the, the best solution. Yeah, so Cogs, Cogs agrees with me that those mission warnings are annoying. Um... So, Coalition says, uh, Diana lives on in the smiley bunny happy factory. Uh, if she's alive, she is there. Uh, he says you can try to find her there. So, doesn't she... So, she... Hmm, that's a good question. So, this this is the factory I think we're talking about, right? I'm going to go over there. So, I think that that's, that's where she ends up. If you don't recruit her, maybe? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember when that... Because, yeah, that factory does play into her story. And we did consciously choose to make that factory like the hippie factory later on. Hinting at Diana's influence. Um, that was that was a, 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 a conscious choice. Though I think I think we actually changed the shape of that factory quite a bit. We kind of retconned it. It'll actually, you know what? It'll be interesting to go back to that factory and see, remind myself what it actually looks like in Heartland, because I think it's really different from Homecoming. Not just in that, you know, in Homecoming, it's all decorated and pretty, but also I think just the landscape around it and the shape of the factory is different. If I remember right, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. Oh, Cogs is wondering if... Uh, in Heartland, we've got the facility action uh, to remove infection. I'm not sure. I guess I should have used it. I'm planning on not getting in much trouble, but, you know, I plan that all the time, and it doesn't happen. So maybe we're going to end up needing to go home and uh, cure Brock. But you know what? That's okay. If I ever want to get that one obnoxious achievement, I do need to uh, heal a lot of people. So, or cure a lot of people. So there are worse things. But I just realized, I noticed earlier, somebody had asked a question that involved the word Zeds, and I don't remember exactly what it was. Oh, hey, you know what? This is actually more similar. This is more similar to Homecoming than I remember. I actually thought we had made, a, made bigger changes to this than we did, because... Yeah, because this wall here... I think it might be a fence. At least it has a gate here. Oh, look at this! She lived! She lived! She's alive! She made it! Diana! Hey there! What do you want? To trade I with you, I guess. You, want. you got something I want. Sure, sounds good. I can buy materials from her, a salvage furnace. All kinds of stuff. Okay. So, it feels like I probably still can't recruit her. But I'm glad she's live. She's alive. I'm glad she made it. Fuck it. Empty. Oh, okay. So, Kragen is asking about... Okay, the question about Zeds was... Uh, Kragen was saying, uh, Do we call the zombies Zeds because of the British-English pronunciation of Z? Uh, or is it a reference to it being used in other series? I thought... That that was the origin in other series, and I was just curious because they're all in America. Yeah, so I think um, I'm not sure where we got Zeds. I think I think it might it may be that uh, they might have been called that in something like maybe in Zombie Survival Guide or World War Z or something like that. I think it's a reference to something. I think that characters in the game use that term because that term exists in zombie media. I think it's meant to sound a little bit military. Um, like, you know, because, you know, people in the military, they use a lot of acronyms, a lot of nicknames for things. Gotta stay away from the sick and even though that's Z's. a British way to say Z, I mean, I can imagine that, you know, the militaries of the world might be collaborating on this problem because it's a worldwide problem. I could see the military picking up the idea of calling them Zeds from 
the British military and then or the Indian military or anyone else who speaks, you know, a different dialect of English from the United States and that's spreading around and then spreading from the military to civilians. That that's the way I imagine it working. But yeah, it does kind of have that military tone to it doesn't and I, I don't really know why I feel like it has a military tone to it, but it kinda does. Gamer Geek says that he thought it was uh, zombies being just zombies being some kind of copyright thing, like somebody out there owns zombies, and so we have to call it something else. Uh, no, so so the term zombie is not trademarked or owned by anyone. Um, I think it's mostly the reason people tend to change it up. You know, the fact that uh, the Walking Dead calls them walkers, and uh, you know, different people call them different things. I think there's there's a uh, a word for them in The Last of Us. Some people, sometimes uh, some people will call them infected or whatever and won't use the word zombies. It's mostly because the word zombie uh, feels comedic sometimes. Like it's, you know, there's so many ways that, that the idea of zombies has been used. Um, it's, you know what? I just realized I didn't get a good... I think I kind of want to show Diana in the thumbnail of this video. And I didn't get a good shot of her. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. While we're talking about zombies, I'm going to go back and get a thumbnail with Diana. That's a really stupid idea, but whatever. Um, zombies, the phrase zombie has just got a really weird mixed tone to it, right? Like, because sometimes it's used in a serious way. Yeah, it's meant to be kind of spooky and creepy and disgusting. But it's also, there's Plants vs. Zombies. There's Stubbs the Zombie. There's Shaun of the Dead. All of which use the term zombies. Uh, I think Fido might... Does Fido use the term zombie? I'm not sure. Um, iZombie uses the term zombie. They, uh, there's all of these, like, kind of tongue-in-cheek zombie stories that all use the term zombie. And so I think if you're trying to make something that's got a little bit more of a serious tone, and you want people to sort of, like, treat the emotional stakes like they're real, it helps to not call them zombies. It, because that brings in so much baggage from less serious bits of zombie lore um and so and also it just it lets you also kind of avoid the sense that um hey diana let's try to get a nice little shot of her there we go hello diana let's get a little closer to you okay i don't want my marker there i do want to see that awesome outfit so I'm turning my back on Diana. There we go. This that's that's the name of this episode. I turned my back on Di I turned my back on Diana. <laughs> All right, anyway. Um and there's also this implication that if you call them zombies, then that means that the idea of zombies exists in this world. And there have already been zombie movies and zombie lore like cuz the word zombie comes from I mean it comes originally from like, you know, voodoo stuff, but it, it, it came to mean this kind of thing through zombie movies. Uh, and sometimes, you know, zombie B movies. Uh, and, and this whole, like, culture that's built up around the idea of a zombie apocalypse. Uh, and that's where the word comes from. And people are kind of aware of the roots of the word. And so if you want to have, kind of the way that um, Watchmen, you know, in the world of Watchmen, there are not superhero comics. There are pirate comics because superheroes exist in the world and so superhero comics would be weird you know because like because why you, you go to comics to escape reality to go to fantastical places you can't go in real life if real life is full of actual superheroes then you're not going to have you know superheroes will not be a a comic genre the same way that they are here where it like you know it's just it's all about the comics um now, you probably would have superheroes in comics because they're just part of life, but it would be a different vibe, you know, a different feeling. Um, and so, in a similar way, you know, in, like, I don't know, in, in a world where you want people to be sort of, like, have zombies as part of their real life, having them also have the same history of of being, you know, just uh, part of, part of sort of, like, the sci-fi and horror world just feels strange. Like, like, I guess, okay, I guess what I'm trying to say is you would imagine that a world that has already been steeped in zombie mythology, if it actually happened, everyone, everybody would be looking around like, what? This is just weird B-movie stuff. Like, why, 
Why is this happening in real life? This is so weird. Like you'd expect people to have that reaction. And so if you want, you know, people to have authentic, genuine reactions to the zombies in your world, then you have to be setting it in a world where there is not zombie media. The same way that su like, the, the Watchmen is set in a world without superhero media. You need to set your zombie story in a world without zombie media, which means the word zombie would not have taken on the meaning that it has in our actual modern real society. You would have to make up a word for them. And so you would call them something probably else. You probably wouldn't re like reach deep into voodoo lore somewhere to pick a name for them. You would just call them whatever you improvised in the moment to call them. Um, and so I think that's part of it too. Like why why a lot of zombie stories don't say zombie is because we're trying they're trying to imply that zombie media media does not exist in this world. That people don't have the advantage of having spent generations thinking about how they would survive the zombie apocalypse. They have to improvise hey, neighbor, from scratch. I got another proposition for you. They're more on their back foot. Because like, a lot of people, you know, kind of make jokes that if the zombie apocalypse actually happened in real life, people who were trained on zombie media would know immediately what to do. We wouldn't Maybe fall victim to it. Because we would just defeat it really fast because everyone would already be trained. Everyone's already watched The Walking Dead. We already know what to do. Um, and so part of what makes zombies succeed is that no one knows what to do with them, which means you can't be in a world that implicitly has zombie movies in it. So uh, Fallstar did some research and said that apparently Wikipedia says that, the, that that English word was first recorded in like 1819. That's true. Uh, but it was referring to something else. It was referring to a magical thing that happened in sort of like voodoo culture. Uh, it was, it was, it was a, uh, like a curse that you would put on someone effectively. Um, and it was not this idea of someday the dead will rise and we will all be overwhelmed by them. Like that's a, a different vibe. Uh, that, that you know, it taps into that sort of spookiness of somebody who appears to be both alive and dead at the same time, which does come from you know that idea of zombies in like you know Haiti. But it's not, uh, it's yeah, it's it's become something fairly different from what it originally was. Uh, uh. <laughs> Cog is like, everyone has watched The Walking Dead? I haven't. I don't mean literally everyone has watched that particular show. I mean that it's very, it is very, uh, it's a general experience to know what zombie media is and to be engaged with it. Walking Dead is one of the most popular shows uh, in the history of television. A lot of people have seen it and people are aware of it. Um, and if you haven't even, you know, if you've never watched a zombie movie or a zombie TV show, people talk about zombies enough that you're still steeped in it. Like, it's really, really common uh, for people to know something about uh, zombies because of the popularity of things like The Walking Dead. So, Kragen says that actually one of the reasons he's avoided Walking Dead is because it seemed like it's so stretched out, it wouldn't really about be about the uh, the zombies, it would be about the human drama, and he was just like, that's not really what I want, I want just, I want conflict with zombies. Um, and that, you know, that makes sense, I mean, to, to each their own, right? Uh, for me, a lot of what I like about zombie stories is the fact that it's pushing humans to their extremes, and it's really about the human drama. It's almost like a disaster movie, where it's like, you know, the Titanic sinking isn't a character. That building being on fire isn't a character. That asteroid hitting isn't a character. It's it's not really what it's about. It's about what the humans do in response. And I feel like the zombie apocalypse is kind of like that. It's about what the humans do in response, much less than it's about the zombies themselves. But that's just my attitude, and that's why I like things like The Walking Dead and why I actually like State of Decay, because it's, you know, trying to be about a little bit more than the zombie threat. Though, you know, I, I think... We can do more to make it really feel like that's what it's about. <laughs> La Comunicion says, I honestly am mixed on the Spanish-speaking characters in our game calling them huertos, uh, because he doubts that would happen in real life. I doubt a lot of these would happen in real life. Some people uh, speaking English in the game call them creepers, and I don't think we'd call them that, because that feels like a Minecraft monster. Uh, so, And we know that you know Microsoft... Uh, you know, and, and, and the Xbox exists in this world, so I imagine Minecraft probably also exists in this world. So I don't, I don't think people would call them creepers either. But you know, part of what we're doing there is just giving the Can characters the different disease? personalities, like making them really try to stand out from each other by giving them different terms for the zombies. You will notice that different voices 
um, the characters do have consistently different names for the zombies, which I think is kind of fun. So, True Set asks, uh, did they update what you could add to your base? Uh, maybe it's just been a while. Are, are you looking at this Tyrannosaurus? Uh, so, no, this is just, this is me playing in Heartland. So, for those of you who don't really know much about Heartland, Heartland is an alternate game mode that's set in Trumbull Valley that has more of a, uh, like, a specific story to it than the core game. Um and there's only one base in it, and it's at Jurassic Junction, which has got this giant Tyrannosaurus in it. So this is just this is one particular base that already has this uh, this Tyrannosaurus. So we have finished the Plague Annex, which is uh, the thing that Isaac does. My last group so yes, I can heal all infection on a character, and I can make chemicals, and I can craft plague consumables, which include scent block. Zedi and Zedrenaline. Scent block is going to be really valuable when I'm trying to get through the gauntlet. I'm going to have to remember that. So actually, that might be the good reason to grab Isaac, the reason I recruited Isaac. Not that I had it in mind at the time, but it's a good reason to, is because what he can craft is going to have a lot to do with my success eventually in the gauntlet, presuming that I succeed. La Coalition says, actually, I do not recommend it. You do not recommend using scent block at the gauntlet? Uh, I, I, I'm curious why, because I mean, you're probably, that's probably a good idea. Oh, it's useless. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I, I assumed it was useful. I, did, you know, I didn't design the gauntlet, and so, uh, yeah. I just assumed it would put me, it would take the pressure off me, so that I could focus on killing the zombies I needed to kill, and, uh, you know, and shooting the, uh, the little bloater targets, bloater tummy targets, uh, when it was time. But I guess I'm wrong. Oh, that's right. So Tank says that they call them creeps, not creepers. That's true. I might be misremembering, in which case my Microsoft slash Minecraft comment is, is irrelevant. Let's see here. Hang in there, okay? Um, wait, what did True say? Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so people are talking and I missed some of this conversation. Oh, Falser wants to know if anyone's seen the first episode of The Last of Us on HBO. Uh, and I have not watched it yet. I'm still, I, I'm waiting until I can find the right time to watch it together with my wife. And uh, she's a very busy person. And so we don't really get a lot of opportunities to watch stuff together. But that's one I really want us to try to share. Because I've heard it's very, very good. Uh, the, the the TV critics that I watch, um, uh, which is the, the pilot TV podcast, by the way, highly recommended. Um, I actually pay for the special episodes, I whatever, because it's so good. Um... They love it. Uh, one of them is a fan of the original of the game that it's based on, and so he really loves it. But he loves it so much, that even though the others are like, "Yeah, I like it too. It's not really my thing, but I like it." He overwhelms them, and I, <laughs> he makes me really hopeful about uh, about how that goes. Uh, so awesome Twitch dude. No, I have I I sorry, I haven't really been pursuing uh, uh, official word on whether or not we can share the fate document. Um, so yeah, he's he's referring to the fact that we uh, that that uh, Andy, who I've been talking about this whole time, our lead writer uh, from State of Decay Two, that he um, uh, he put together sort of an account of what happened to every character after uh, after Heartland, who's in Heart or, or, or every character across State of Decay, and uh, also Twitch has been wondering if we can share that document, and I haven't actually pursued whether or not we can we can share that information. So, I mean, it's nothing... It's just stuff that can be found in the game. If you've played the game or read the wikis and stuff like that, I think you've got the same information that we have. I don't think there's anything new in there, but it's a convenient resource to just look at, you know? And so, if you're curious about at least, at least what our attitude is about what happened to the characters. Who'd have thought a gas station could actually feel like So, Lutamic is pointing out that I'm about to get blood plague. So, I am going to switch away from Brock for the next episode. So, Brock is going to get a nice rest to recover from the infection. He's going to be fine. Kraken says he wasn't going to watch that show because he's not a fan of the series. Uh, but then he saw uh, that Nick Offerman is in it, so now he has to. Uh, yeah, no, Nick Offerman is awesome. I mean, I, uh, you know, Pedro Pascal and, uh, and what's her name? Leanna Mormont. I forgot the name of the actress. She's great, though. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good reasons to uh, to watch the show, actor-wise. 
Awesome Twitch team says we need a state of decay show. Uh, I don't personally think that we do, but, you know, whatever. If, if they ever come to us offering, Bella Ramsey. Thank you, Paroxicus. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I don't personally, I'm not a huge fan of just thinking, of feeling like, you know, everything needs to be in every, in every medium, you know, like, and, and there's so, sort of a sense that, developed among video games for a little while where it's like a video game has really made it when somebody wants to make it into a movie that's when it's real and you're like no i think video games need to sort of give themselves enough credit that something is real when it's a video game and it doesn't need to be a movie to have legitimacy and so i don't or, or a tv show in this case so like i you know i i personally feel like you know state of decay a lot of what state of decay is doing is about it being a video game it's about the fact that you sort of you are managing this community that's what makes it interesting. And so I feel like since that wouldn't translate over, I'm just not feeling a huge impetus like we like it ought to exist in another medium. <laughs> well, like I said, you can keep hoping. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I doubt it's ever going to happen. But, you know, there you go. Anyway, let me wrap up this episode. Uh, so if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'll put a button there. Place. Links to other videos. You know the drill. That's There's some stuff. <laughs> Next Heartland video is going to be there. I'm tired. <laughs>